Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and I have a bunch of generators, or stuff that can be used as generators, to convert mechanical force into an electrical current. The first one is the regular car alternator. These are DC permanent magnet motors. This is a drill motor. This is a larger, uh, better built DC motor. This is a brushless alternating current generator, an AC generator, 1000 watt version. This is a fan motor. And over here is another generator, another 1000 watt generator, which is different than this generator. This one's smaller, but it produces this is the same wattage. This is an inverter generator. So I'm going to start with the inverter generator and explain the difference between an inverter generator and a regular generator. The inverter generator has this very small unit right here that turns, and the entire generating portion is this right here. If you look over at the regular AC generator, this large, about 15 pound unit of copper and windings is its generating unit. This is what most generators that people have for backup power use. This is uh, the older technology. This uses electromagnetism. There's no magnets in this. There is a, the windings in the center produce an electromagnetic field and the stator, which is the part that all of these wires are hooked to, it's actually around the outside. On this, if you come over and look at this one, this is more like your typical generator in that the stator is attached to the center and the magnets rotate around the outer portion of it. There are ceramic magnets. They're not rare earth magnets. So they do that. They use those because rare earth magnets, these windings have uh, a metal core down the middle. So while it would create more power, it would create more drag on the engine. So this spins in a circle. This probably looks very familiar to some of you. This is similar to what motorcycles use, their stator that they have. Um, it's basically about the same size. So the way that this one works, when this turns, the magnets create an electrical current inside the, wire, the, the windings. And there's a set of wires that come out. This produces an, an alternating current, which comes off of the different poles in there that's actually useless. So this is a rectifying bridge diode. This takes the alternating current and converts it into direct current. This comes over here to the DC battery charging side to charge batteries. It's 12 volt, 8.3 amp. Now if you follow that around, there's also another set of wires which are right here. And you can see that. That plugs into the inverter. Now this also has something that converts the alternating current into direct current inside of there. Then this acts like a standard inverter and takes that converted direct current, alternating to direct current, this converts it back out to alternating current to this section here. The reason they do that is so that this can actually spin at variable speeds. This generator has to spin at 3600 RPMs or you get low voltage you get uh, kind of a messed up frequency. So the reason that people like the inverter generators is they're smaller, they're more lightweight, the casing is very uh, small. And this is the actual casing that came with that generator. You can see that it's got room for a gas tank and the whole generator sits right there. These are uh, quieter, they produce a cleaner power. If you have a voltage drop and you have sensitive electronics hooked up to it or stuff that requires a uh, very good clean fr frequency, they either won't work on this or they can get damaged from this if you're, you put a heavy load on this and this drops and picks it back up again. These, it can slow down to a certain extent. It can't drop to zero, but it can slow down and pick up and it doesn't have to match the speed as well as that does. And this basically keeps your voltage nice and stable. This generator, while that one has a the stator on the inside and the magnets that go around the outside, this has has it on the outside. You can see that the, uh, the wires from the stator actually come out. And inside of there, there is copper windings on the rotor. Uh, they actually produce a magnetic, electromagnetic field. So this can uh, raise or lower the voltage by that field increasing. This is actually quite similar to your standard car alternator. Now, the reason that these don't make a great solution for green projects has to do with the fact that these don't have magnets in them either. So 
the rotor on the inside is some triangle shaped metal pieces that you're going to notice I drilled some holes in here and added some wiring to it and the reason that I did that is I want to show you something. To show you what I'm talking about, I'm free spinning the uh, rotor inside of the alternator and what I have here is a DC battery and you can, I don't know if you can see the spark but anyways this maxes out the electromagnetic field inside of there so what I'm going to do is just show you, I can spin that, now what I'm going to do is just hit it and I can it goes from spinning nicely like that to not being able to move so if you were to hook this to a wind turbine and excite that center part in there and put any type of load on it your turbine would slow down dramatically it has to do with the fact that there is a lot of metal in there that locks it up so we will be covering in future videos uh, some information on uh, dual axial flux turbines with air air center coils and the reason that those work really well is there is no metal in them and the magnetic field still goes through the coils but it's uh, it's a lot more efficient the reason I did that is to energize the core on this if this does not have an electrical current running through it it will not produce any electricity so the the power that these generate is determined by the electrical current sent to this that causes uh, an increased or decreased magnetic field. This produces useless alternating current. I say useless because if you hooked it directly to something, it would pretty much destroy the motor, the computer, whatever you're hooking it to. But on the back of these, or inside of here, they have a, a rectifier, um, a bridge diode in there that converts alternating current to direct current that your car uses. Now the reason that they use this setup, A, these are cheaper to make, they don't have to put magnets in there, it's easier to just use recycled copper wire or recycled copper and then they make use new wire of course, but by increasing or decreasing the current to this you actually can increase the alternator's output. So you're constantly driving, your engine's running at 2,000, 3,000 RPMs. This is actually um, usually pulley down. There's a, uh, they run on a smaller pulley. So these can spin at a lot more RPMs in your engine. So this, if this were to just run and be a generator the whole time, you would overcharge your batteries. And you would also put a constant drain on your engine. So what this does is whenever your car or truck doesn't need it, the magnetic field in there drops and this basically spins free. That's why the hydrogen generators are really questionable in my opinion as to whether they work because you're putting a load on this causing additional drag on your engine so whatever they produce is pretty much uh, created from here and lost. But that's a whole different video. Over to the permanent magnet motor. Now this, these have real magnets inside of them. This is a drill motor and by the way these make terrible generators they are very inefficient because the goal behind these is to make them as cheaply as possible but this the larger ones work pretty good now you're going to notice that this I took one of these apart so there is how it looks and actually this is a larger version of it and if you if you look inside of there there are two ceramic magnets mounted to the outside and your um, rotor this this is the part that goes in the middle and you have your windings there now this is a magnetic ferrous material that causes the um, the magnetic field to go through the copper to either produce a magnet make these magnetic to repel and d to spin as a drill the way the reason these are direct current if you were to just hook this up if you were to spin the magnets around the outside of this and hook to these you would create alternating current but what they use because this spins you can't the wires would get all wrapped around it in a big mess so you can't so they use brushes that go to the commutator on here now these brushes stay in the same place so they're always on the same side of the particular pole of magnet that they're designed to go these keep your north pole on one side your south pole on the other these particular ones are less efficient just has to do with the type of magnets they use 
These are designed to be as cheap as possible. A motor like this, with this drill, probably costs about $2 new. This larger one, $3. So they're not designed to be extremely efficient. They're designed to be cheap and produce a lot of power. And they're very dependable. They last a long time. Ugh. Cordless drills like this, the motor usually outlasts the battery a lot uh, by years. So anyways, that's what's inside of these. The um, These come around, and these are actually pretty strong magnets in there. And the reason that they don't make a great generator is because you can see that there is a lot of resistance just from the magnetic field alone in there. So these spin in there, and these windings are kind of interesting the way that they crisscross them, but that is um, that. The larger motor I'm not going to take apart because this was this is a $400 motor, but I got it for a pretty good price. This actually produces a pretty cool voltage. Um, fan motors and induction motors can work, but you have to set the capacitors a certain way. These also require an enormous amount of RPMs. To, to uh, The actual squirrel cage motors require an enormous amount of RPMs. And if you have a 500 watt motor, you can expect to get about 150 to 200 watts out of them. They're usually a quarter of what they generate. So it's a great gadgety project if you're looking to take an old lawnmower engine and hook it up to one of these and go through all of that to produce 150 watts you're better off to just spend this this engine right here was 115 dollars for shipping that's why i took it apart and i mean you could probably salvage one of these and get your money back but um you get a thousand watts and it's going to be a lot more efficient than that setup and these the inverter generators back to them they are um well they're about 300 dollars for this um this one was wrecked when i got it so i didn't mind Reckon it some more, but I'm going to go into taking both of these completely apart in future videos. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.